NASA was well aware that there's, of course, no wind on the moon. There's no way to naturally make it sort of fly as you'd expect a flag to be. So instead, they created this mechanism that would keep the flag unfurled even without that wind, keep it sort of outstretched. Unfortunately, as the astronauts were installing it, the mechanism got a little bit jammed before it was completely unfurled all the way. So this means that um, the flag does have sort of a, a permanent ripple in it, a ripple that doesn't move, doesn't change, but it is always there. Um, additionally to this, um, when those astronauts were originally installing that flag, as they knocked the flag, that caused that momentum, caused that um, flag to look like it was moving a little bit, even though there was, again, no wind. So there is a very great amount of dangerous radiation trapped by the Earth's magnetic field and what we call those Van Allen belts. But the spacecraft that took those Apollo 11 astronauts out through that Van Allen belt was flying at a very high speed, meaning that they were only exposed to that radiation for a very short amount of time. A short enough amount of time that literally the spacecraft walls themselves were enough to protect them from that radiation. So you can actually see the same effect of this if you try and take a picture of the night sky with your own smartphone at home. You'll find that you just get a picture of complete blackness because in reality, if you wanted to take a picture of those stars, you'd have to use an exposure time of a good few seconds, maybe even a couple of minutes to get all those stars in view. The moon's surface itself is very bumpy, very lumpy, lots of craters and mountains, things like that. So the sun, when it bounces off that surface of the moon, it can sometimes bounce off in a few different directions caused by all that, those uneven surfaces. And this makes some of those shadows look like they're coming from perhaps diff different directions that you're not expecting. Additionally to this, there is actually a little bit of light that we um, receive on the moon from the Earth itself. Some of the sun's light will bounce off all those blue oceans and that will cause something called earth shine which also illuminates the moon a little bit from another direction. If a module of that size were to try and land softly on the earth you probably would see a very large blast crater caused by all the retro rockets all the thrust being fired in the opposite direction to slow the spacecraft down. However on the moon there is much lower gravity so much less of that backwards thrust is needed to slow the spacecraft down so not enough to actually cause a crater at all. There's many more pieces of evidence to back up that the Apollo 11 moon landings happens. Um, one of the things was that they brought back a huge amount of lunar rocks, lunar samples that have been thoroughly tested in labs to prove that they are actually from the moon. Additionally to that, the Apollo 11 astronauts left some mirrors on the surface of the moon, mirrors that we can actually fire lasers from here on Earth. It's an experiment that is being carried out to get very accurate measurements of how far away the moon and the Earth are from each other. So many more political reasons on top of that. Russia and the US were in a big space race at the time. Um, and if it was a true race, it's not very likely that Russia would just allow America to win if they hadn't actually reached the surface of the moon, if there wasn't enough evidence for them to believe it as well. On top of that, the number of people it would take to cover up a conspiracy this big is so many that by now, surely someone would have spilled that secret.